Hey guys, it's Ed Jakob Bud here. I've got my deer stalker on today and my magnifying glass doing a bit of research. As you guys will know, for at least a limited period of time, I'm going to have some restricted mobility in my right arm. Took a fall, injured my shoulder and my elbow, and yeah, arm swing will be limited right now. So it got me thinking, how do people with some sort of physical restriction like that actually tie up the running shoes? Do you just not run? Well, that's ridiculous. Humans can do whatever they want to do. As such, I've been looking into options for those with some sort of physical impairment, and it didn't really take me very long, because there aren't many. Hey cats, welcome back to the channel. You stopping by is always appreciated. If you're new to the channel here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also click the bell <laughs> so you get notified of when we launch those new videos. And it really helps us out here if you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. Danke schön. So did some research into accessible running shoes. And like I said, it didn't take very long. There really aren't all that many out there at all. In fact, it got me quite angry. So what is out there if you have some sort of physical mobility issue? Just to help you get the shoes on, maybe tie them up, fasten them, and take them off at the end of your running session. I predominantly looked for things that would assist if you had some sort of limited motor functionality in your hands. Maybe you couldn't actually reach down to be able to get to the shoe. Here's some of the options that I found. Nike pretty much are the only manufacturer at the high end at least, who have got any options whatsoever. So the Flies models came about by an idea from a young man with cerebral palsy. He contacted Nike and requested that they make some shoes for people that cannot tie traditional shoelaces. That was back in 2015, I think. Since then, they've developed several models across their running, basketball, and kind of lifestyle lines. Some of these flyies options differ from shoe to shoe, but they all feature some single action fastening that just takes a lot of the pressure and strain out of actually tying the shoe. So as a daily trainer, the Air Zoom Pegasus 38 flyies has some great underfoot cushion and standard Pegasus appointments, but they've replaced the normal laces with much thinner trail style laces. In fact, they're super thin really when you consider it. Similar to perhaps the toggle laces you might see on a Solomon trail shoe, they can be tightened by the side tab, which is made of Velcro. You'll notice that the whole lateral heel side of the shoe is made of Velcro material, which is the loop section of the material itself, whereas the tab features the hook part. So you can kind of pull the laces to tension at some point and then hook it on and you don't need to touch it again, hopefully. Could that wear out over time? I suggest Velcro does after continuous use, but Nike have thought of that. I think the intention here is for you to get in and out of the shoe via the zip fastening on the medial side. This opens round about to the toe box area and can be easily zipped back up and then the tab stuck back to the coarse material on the medial side of the shoe just underneath the zip. I think it's quite a quick and ingenious method here. So you've got one method to kind of get the tension right, which is all important in running shoes, and then another one that's just pretty much set, kind of like a boot or something, I suppose. And the great thing about it is that Nike are charging the same amount of money for this accessible version of the shoe as per the normal standard one. Again, it does remind me a little bit of that Solomon toggle lacing system, but you really need two hands to be able to use that. Plus then you've got the frustration of trying to put away all of the extra laces into the little sort of pocket there. It really isn't easy, even with two hands. So we're off to a good start. What else have Nike got? The Tempo Next Percent Flies is the same price as the standard model. This features several additions to help ease you into a flying situation. Hopefully not one that I was in last Tuesday as I flew through the air and went splat onto the concrete. First up is the ingenious collapsible heel area. This springs back up into shape after you entering the shoe or importantly assisting in exiting the shoe as well. I think you can stand on the back of it and it will just collapse and allow you to get your foot out perhaps a little easier. Sadly, Nike don't have a video of that in action. I would like to see that and how it actually operates before I shelled out 180 smackaroonies for it. It doesn't stop there though, guys. This is augmented by two pull loops, one at the top of the laces and the other at the bottom near the toe box. So both of those are elasticated and operate a special mechanism built into the shoe, locks the laces in place or loosens them off so you can get out the shoe. So first impressions of this were, aren't the loops gonna sort of 
bang around and flap about as you're running but I guess the elasticate section might just pull them back in enough so that they don't get irritating over time. Again you see those very thin cords used in the lacing mechanism over the top of the foot. I think there's even a small tab on top of the tongue which has been included perhaps to aid in grabbing the shoe and helping to get it into location. So two very viable options there and two shoes that I've really enjoyed actually over the last year. In fact the Tempo Next Percent is probably one of my best pace shoes. Pegasus was a really valued daily trainer. There's a whole variety of different flies models such as the Revolution 5, the Glide flies, and a whole range of different basketball shoes that they've offered over the last few years. I guess you could suggest the BOA system that Adidas and a few other companies utilize could be classified in this accessibility section. Here you have a dial-based tightening system which seems to be featured in lots of trail shoes and very high-end boots for ski wear. I think they use some metal-based cords there, so much more robust perhaps. Of course, that's gonna bring it in much heavier than some of these Flyease models from Nike. I think the push to operate idea here on the dial is a really good one, but I think that type of system could require some quite fine motor skills to be able to operate properly. Might get a little bit frustrating for some people, I would have thought. I did talk about the Solomon Quick Lace system a little earlier in the video. I did get my old Sense Rides out again to see just how easy it was. And to be honest, you need both hands to be able to operate that system properly. So if I missed any glaringly obvious options here, to start with, I thought that perhaps I was just missing out. I hadn't noticed them, I hadn't seen them, but then I quickly realized that actually there just aren't any. Why is it only Nike have spent a bit of time coming up with some options for runners who have limited physical mobility? Some may say it's a bit of a niche product, but I would suggest that it's probably stopping people getting out there. If they can only buy standard lacing products, they might really want to run. And they just might not be able to do it. Remember that struggle to get out the door on a cold, wet Tuesday morning, 6am. It's not really all that much of a struggle now, is it? I think the Rang Shoe brands need to raise their game a little bit here. It really is appalling, in fact, that there's so few options for those that need it. Even some of the stuff that's supposed to make it easier for someone who has no mobility issues to be able to get the shoe on, I don't think it makes it all that much easier. Lace is inherently a bit of a pain. They're either too long, too short, too thick, too thin. Unless you triple knot something, it's probably gonna come apart at some point in the shoe's life cycle. I've got to be honest, I tie mine up every time I use them. I don't like shoehorning my foot into a shoe that's already tied. I just can't do that. Let me know if there's any glaring emissions down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you. Comes today from Silver Bullet with the album Bring Down the Walls, No Limit Squad Returns. Certainly one of the longer album titles out there. I think this one was released in 1991. I do remember having a vinyl copy of it and I really liked it because it was sort of like an amalgamation of hip hop and some of the early jungle and hardcore music that I really enjoyed back then. All the tempos are very high here, very sped up breakbeats and some quite aggressive delivery from Silver Bullet himself. They featured loads of sort of horror film, sci-fi film samples all over the record. I can imagine it must have cost a fair old bit to license all of them. If they did, that is. Key tracks for me here are 20 seconds to comply. I bet you can figure out where the sample's from there. And also Undercover Anarchist. Well, it doesn't really sound that anarchy-like these days, I suppose. Probably the same as some um, famous Sex Pistols track does. It just doesn't really sound all that wild now. Quite refreshing listen, really. Everything else back then was a little smoother, this had some quite rough edges to it. Lots of turntable stuff as well. No sampling, messing around. A lot of it sounds like it was done uh, using just the turntables themselves, which is always fresh. It's a very different take on hip hop. Certainly British hip hop from that period. It makes some of the stuff now just seem throwaway almost. Bring down the walls, no limit squad returns from Silver Bullet. Go and check it out, guys. I think you may enjoy it. Thanks for listening to my musings on accessible running shoes. And I uh, hope you agree with me that there really aren't enough. There aren't enough options. If you're enjoying the content here, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also click the bell below for notifications when I launch those new videos for you. It really helps us out here too at Bud Running Shoe Reviews if you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share this video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.